Let's take a look at doing the electrical safety test with the ESA, the Fluke ESA 612 electrical safety analyzer. We're going to use a Space Labs Cube patient monitor as our device under test. Now, the reason I'm using this device is because I want to be able to do patient uh, leakage tests. Um, the, the limits for those for a closed ground patient uh, leakage test uh, needs to be limited to 100 microamps for an open ground configuration on our tester. We need to the leakage current should be less than 500 microamps. So we're gonna go ahead and do all the other types of tests, all the other safety tests that we would normally do in our electrical safety inspection. One thing that's different with this Fluke 612 is there is a power switch, as opposed to the 609, which you just plug in. So this one runs through its test. Now you notice with this one, it does not ask for a, a test standard. Okay, it's gonna assume the test standard that you initially have programmed into the device but if you do need to change it, you can go to Setup, More, Instrument, and you can select your standard right there. Uh, but we're going to leave it on the AMI ANSI NFPA 99 test standard. So as normal, you can check the line. Uh, this one has a little bit... And some, and to me, this is actually a worse display than the 609 because it only tells you one thing at a time. You actually have to click and cycle through each test, which... Why not just put all that information on the screen? I mean, to me, that's a, a poor design decision, but not that big a deal. Okay, now the, the first thing we're gonna do is the ground wire resistance test. Always the first step, uh, assuming you've done the physical inspection already. So one of the things that's uh, nice about the Fluke 612, the SA 612, is it has this nice, test point right there that you can zero the lead on. So once you hit that ohms button, uh, F4 will zero the lead. Okay, so once we do, and you can actually see like how that contact resistance is, is affected by me wiggling that cord there. Um, but, you know, we have eliminated the resistance. Once that uh, test lead has been zeroed, or the, the tester has been zeroed for that lead, now we can go ahead and hook up the device under test. All right, we have our uh, power cord here. Plug that in to our electrical safety analyzer. And now, now we are going to uh, measure. If we look at our medical device here, we can spot the ground connection right there. Hook up our alligator clip to that ground connection. Okay, so you notice we're measuring 0.1 ohms, which is less than our 0.5 ohm requirement, right? The, the resistance from this point to this point needs to be less than 0.5 ohms, which our meter is telling us it is. We need to make sure we test the strain reliefs as well making sure there are not large variations. You can actually see some pretty good variations there over here. And I've noticed that a lot of these uh, Space Labs power cables do have a significant variation, some of them, and, and a lot of them tend to fail right over here. Uh, but we are still under the 0.5 ohm resistance level. So that does pass. Okay, our next test is gonna be touch current, single fault condition with both the device on and off. So we hit the microamps button our tester. So right once we've hit that microamps button on our tester, see it switches over to leakage current. So right now it's measuring ground wire leakage. Uh, what we're interested in is touch current, also known as chassis leakage or enclosure leakage. All right now we got to make sure we have, right now this polarity is off, meaning the power is actually off to this device. I, if I hit the power switch on the device, it's not going to turn on. So I have to turn that to normal polarity. So right now we're testing in the no fault condition and we need to turn the device on and off in the no fault condition. And for a no fault condition with the device on and off, we should get less than 100 microamps for touch current. Next, we're gonna to wanna to test in the single fault condition. So I want the neutral closed and I'm gonna want the earth or the ground open for the test. Okay, now, this is touch current or chassis leakage current being measured. I got my conditions all set right. 
Uh, the one thing I have to do with this is I have to make sure I turn the device on and off. Uh, with a single fault condition on, on and off switch turned on, you know, turn the switch on and off, the leakage current is kept below 500 microamps, so this passes the touch current test. Now let's go to the patient leakage test. So for the patient leakage test, you're gonna need to use your ECG cables. So you'll notice that the ESA612 actually shows you the locations to put the ECG leads. So you wanna make sure that the color codes that you have on your, uh, on your ECG connection points match the connection labels on your tester. So make sure that the top row here is matching the top row or matching these over here. So from this location, you're gonna run the patient test first. So to do that, you go to more, you uh, are selecting these leads and you can cycle through actually what groups of leads you wanna test. And this can be important for the 60601. Um, for us, we're just gonna test all the leads uh, together and that's appropriate for the NFP99. So we're gonna select that and we're gonna measure lead to ground we're gonna make sure we have this in normal polarity, neutral is closed, and we're gonna open the earth, which we should expect that to go up a little bit. So you see, if I close that, it's gonna go down. We should expect to see the leakage current creep up a bit as I open that earth. So for our lead to ground in normal polarity with open earth, we need to be less than 100, sorry, less than 500 uh, microamps. When I close that, we need to be less than 100 microamps. So both of those are, are well below this, what we need to be at. Um, open that back up. So now you do want to run the test when the device is in the off state as well. So I turn the device off. Uh, we have normal, closed, open earth. We can run that and both of those check out the same exact pretty much leakage currents. They're both under the 100 and 500 microamps respectively. You will see the lead isolation here. I'll say that's uh, tests not required in the NFP and 99. That is a uh, test you'll see in ISO standards. That that test though, you do want to be careful about that. That uh, energizes the leads at 120 volts just to make sure they stay isolated. And you know, if you were to touch uh, those leads during that test, that can be actually a, a dangerous thing to do. So you do have to be careful. You'll even see this warning show up. Oh yeah. So in order to do this, you're going to actually have to push test because it is sort of a a dangerous test you'll even see it like lights up like hey applying voltage to these leads do not touch them um, so just if you ever do iso 60601 make sure you're very cautious with that test um, but that's not required in the fp 99 i'm just showing you that as a side note so now i'm going to go to my lead to lead leakage so to do that i go back I hit lead to lead, okay? So I look at my testing conditions, normal polarity, good, neutrals, closed, earth. So I can go ahead and uh, cycle through these different leads to make sure that uh, they're all under 100 microamps right now. Oop, too fast. So there's a bunch of different combinations, testing in between. Uh, different leads in the system, right? So that's what we're doing right now. And I cycled through it fairly quickly there. But uh, let's turn this on. All right, so you do want to run tests in both the on and the off states. Just... Uh, Okay, so right now I have normal polarity, neutrals closed, earth open, device is on. And I'm gonna cycle through the different leads, all being under 500 microamps. I'm hoping they're all under 500 microamps. And they're all very low, which is what you would expect for a device like this. And that's how you do uh, patient leakage tests 
for 5 lead ECG on the Fluke ESA 612. Um, a couple other nice things about this, this tester. Um, you, you know, you can do point to point tests. Uh, you can do, uh, you know, basically, which just means you just bought a $3,000 multimeter or more. Um, three to five thousand dollar multimeter um, so I you know very rarely do I see instances where those uh, point to point tests are used but you can do it it is an option um, you can measure current as well this has a patient simulator built into it which is kind of interesting right so I can uh, do a little bit of basic patient simulation using this right so if I want to gener generate uh, 60 beats per minute ECG I can get that on my uh, patient monitor, but I mean, this only does ECG, so it, to me, it has pretty limited functionality. I mean, you can do some basic patient monitoring testing, but you can't do any non-invasive blood pressure or SpO2 or anything like that with a Fluke 612, so uh, I'm not sure what the request was in that. Maybe it was just so easy to put in there, they decided to put it in there. I'm not sure the design decision behind that. I'd be interested to know, like, why, what, what, why did they decide to include that feature? If you know, if you have a, a good instance, a good device where that's actually a very useful thing to have in the 612, you know, I'd be interested to know what, why is that included? Like, why wouldn't you use a SimCube or, uh, you know, or Fluke's patient simulator or some of the other patient simulators out there? That's a more uh, comprehensive uh, approach, which is going to have things like non-invasive blood pressure and SpO2 and some of these other things. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure that you uh, check out the new one that we'll post in hopefully the next couple weeks on the BC Group Tester.